read the tech blogs and you'd be forgiven for thinking that Symbian is dead, that Symbian smartphones are incredibly hard to set up, and that even then they're useless as smartphones. Well, not really. As I've mentioned several times, the Nokia N8 is the, the best phone in the world from my admittedly camera and media centric perspective. So I thought it might be appropriate to give you a, a tour of my smartphone setup on Symbian. At the very least, it'll take some of the mystery out of it all. There's a Wi-Fi scanning widget on most Symbian phones home screens by default, but it's just as easy to go into settings, connectivity and set up Wi-Fi from there. Once connected, it's into the software update utility to check for the latest software updates, the latest OVI maps and firmware patches are a must install. Nokia Social Networking 1.2 is what is in most Symbian 3 devices firmware and it's rubbish. Instead, head for Nokia Beta Labs and grab 1.3, which supports full media uploads and is faster and slicker. A few settings do deserve special mention and are worth making a beeline for. I set phone at display light sensor here to its maximum. You can't do anything about the screen auto dimming in dim conditions to say blinding you, but with this set to max, I find it's about right in all situations for my eyes. In themes in general, I turn theme effects off. I'm not one for screens sliding and bouncing in and out. I just want speed and efficiency. Also in themes, I set the screen saver to big clock if it's not already, giving a 24 seven OLED display of date and time. Yes, all the time, the wonder of OLED pixels, etc. Oh yes, core smartphone functions, at least by the modern definition. Email and Symbian are still an uncomfortable fit, I have to say. There are a dozen solutions and none of them are perfect for me. I use Google's own Gmail client. It's, it's Java based. The interface is a little quirky, but at least I've got full mailbox searching, full recipient lists and full starring of emails. Nokia Social Networking 1.3 already mentioned gives me an overview of all my social contacts from Facebook and Twitter in one timeline. and I can dive into each feed if I need to. Plus, it's fun browsing Facebook friend photo albums. Social networking could be a bit faster, but it does the job for me on Symbian 3. Hey, that rhymes. Uh, web browsing is analogous to that on Windows. There's, there's web equivalent to Internet Explorer, used for web-based installs and emergency stuff, and Opera Mobile 11, equivalent to, well, well, Opera, or Chrome or Firefox under Windows. Far faster, smoother, and slicker. And if I'm on a low bandwidth connection, hey, this is the UK, I use Opera Mini, which still works wonders even on 2G. All my music and favourite videos fit nicely on a 16 gigabyte micro SD card here, so that's trivial to insert into any phone I try. And Symbian 3 plays every single video I own out of the box, which is pretty great. I keep the N8 16 gigabyte mass memory free for captured videos, podcasts, country maps and so on. I don't want to run out of room. I do like to keep my home screen simple, so less swiping around is needed. From top to bottom, there's my upcoming calendar appointments, shortcuts to my eight most used applications, the latest status updates and tweets from the people I follow, and music control. One thing most 2011 devices lack is a set of uh, music hardware buttons. Contacts and calendar both sync to iCal on my Mac, thanks to the Mac's iSync, and it's seamless. I also do a one-way sync every now and then just up to Google Contacts and Calendar in the cloud just to keep my Android phones moderately current. But more on that another time. You'll be wanting to know about my essential apps, of course. Aside from a few I've already mentioned, I couldn't live without uh, Micropool, a lovely little uh, casual pool title and no two games are ever the same. There's Skype, uh, more for the instant messaging to my core work contacts than for VoIP, mind you. There's Podcatcher for gathering podcasts automatically via Wi-Fi and then managing my listening. Nokia Internet Radio, infinite music wherever I am. There's Handy Safe Pro, all my secrets, pins, passwords, confidential information tucked away where you'll never see them. <laughs> so that's my setup. Hopefully you found it interesting. Note that all of the above also applies to the other Symbian 3 powered phones, though they won't have the James Bond gadgets that the N8 has. Regarding Symbian's future, Nokia has rather declared their intentions to wind it down in favour of Windows Phone for 2012 and beyond. But the latter is currently way behind in many ways, and for the rest of this year at least, I'm more than happy to still be rocking Symbian in the form of the Super N8. This, depending on your point of view, is either the future of smartphones 
or yet another boring Android slab. This is the LG P990, also known by many as the Optimus 2X. And it's distinguished by being one of the first smartphones to have a dual core processor, a Tegra 2. What this means in theory is that it's got twice the horsepower and twice the speed. In practice, it just means that video playback is a little smoother, some games run faster, flash video in the web browser runs smoother. You don't have to worry about the battery draining twice as fast since the speed of the two cores is intelligently controlled and because the battery is a decent 1500 milliamp hours. But as ever with these big Android slabs, you have to fully recharge it every night. Do be prepared for this. And it's big. It's built around a four inch WVGA display, adding almost an inch of bezel at the bottom, which seems a bit unnecessary, making the device longer than it actually needs to be. The display is an IPS LCD, i.e. similar to the iPhone 4 in theory, though the Optimus 2X seemed to fare far worse in the sun than the Apple iPhone, so clearly something else is different. Down at the bottom is micro USB for data and charging, plus two speaker grills. Yay! Stereo sound, right? Oh, wrong. The left one is a dummy. There's just a slightly tinny mono speaker here under the right grill. How oh, well. The Optimus 2X is infamous for being the first smartphone to shoot 1080p video, so the camera is a big part of the phone's design, except that LG forgot to put in a shutter button. So you've got to do everything via the touchscreen that you can't actually see if the sun's out, which is when you'd want to be taking photos in the first place. What am I shooting? But let's not get too negative. The LG is solid in the hand in the same way that the Galaxy S was. There's a flimsy back cover that settles into a nice overall form. There's an HDMI port here at the top, plus an adapter in the box for screen mirroring and 1080p video out to a compatible TV. There's a rather curious 3.5mm audio socket here on the top that leaves most headphones I tried, including the supplied ones, sticking out further than they otherwise should. It works, but it looks odd. Finally, on the nicely rubberized back is the camera that I've already mentioned. It produces some decent 8 megapixel stills and good lighting up with any other 8 megapixel camera phone as shown here. There's perhaps a little overzealous sharpening, but that's usual for anything sub Nokia N8-ish. The shutter lag was annoying though. Tap the on-screen shutter and there's a second or two of focusing and beeping before the photo gets taken. I'll do that again. Here we go. Taking now. That's about a two second delay. I don't expect to do any ad hoc action shots with this. This one's for posed subjects only. In low light conditions in my test, the relatively small optics and sensor show themselves in poorly exposed, noisy photos. Video capture, again in good light, is decent at 720p, as long as you don't want to shoot anything too close up like people. Here's a clip. And this is a video demo, video capture on the LG Optimus 2X in rather glorious UK spring sunshine. 720p recording here. Let's look at the audio and video quality. So no focusing options then, which is a shame. The 2X will capture at full 1080p resolution, though you won't be able to sit here, even on my 720p YouTube channel. However, the footage isn't that much more detailed. The optics and sensor just aren't large enough, and it seems that the 1080p claim is more for bragging rights in the smartphone playground. Just to demonstrate this, I took the same tripod-mounted video clip on the 2X in perfect light conditions on a park scene. I then frame grabbed from a static portion of the footage, so it was rock steady, and then cropped right in. Here's the 1080p footage on the left and 720p footage on the right. There is a difference, but it's really, really tiny. Oh, and while we're here, here's the same frame crop comparing 1080p footage on the Optimus 2X with 720p footage on the Nokia N8. You know, it has to be considered a compliment to the LG Optimus 2X that I'm matching its output to the N8 with its giant camera. Uh, even though the 2X doesn't quite have the same all conditions performance and it doesn't really have the same depth of field. So we've got an Android 2.2 smartphone with a big engine under the bonnet. Although the back proudly says with Google, LG has skinned the Optimus 2X quite heavily. There's an iPhone like home screen dock and HTC like proprietary widgets, calendar, social feeds, etc. The only one that's really worthwhile here is time and weather though. Now, where have I seen that before? 
the LG widgets do look good, but they don't really satisfy us. You nearly always have to go through them to do anything meaningful. So you might as just as well have had shortcuts on the home screen in the first place. There's an HTC Sense-like helicopter view and power and music controls in the drop-down notifications curtain. All OK once you get used to them, even if, yet again, as a geek, I'd rather have vanilla Android and create my own home screen and utility setup. Thank you very much. One innovation is the ability to create application categories, as here, a la Symbian circa 2004, and move application icons into them. It's slightly neater and more elegant than the usual Android home screen folders and that the original icons here don't remain in the long apps lifts. There are also a number of proprietary applications, not least of which are customised versions of Twitter and Facebook's official applications, tweaked for use with the dual cores and with a cut down view in the form of LG's pretty decent social widget. All of this works very smoothly and offers a variety of contact syncing options with your Android contacts. Now, Social network involves typing and the virtual keyboard and the Optimus 2X is, well, quirky. It's styled after the Apple iPhones. Yes, it's multi-touch, so you can type quite fast, but there's no option for direct voice input as on the other pure Google devices. And there's an odd choice of supplementary virtual keys here in place of rarely used non-essentials like um, a full stop, a question mark. We've got keys for really essential and critical, change typing language and insert emoticon. I don't know about you, but I'd use the basic punctuation 10 times more frequently. At least there's a, a double space shortcut for full stop, even though you have to discover it for yourself. The Android market is as fully stocked as ever, but uh, LG have done quite a bit for new users with their app advisor here with a nice little intro animation. Um, basically, it's a set of applications curated by country and changed weekly. It's a nice idea. I like it. LG has also preloaded installation packages for a number of games and applications that it particularly recommends. So app-wise, the Optimus 2X is really very well catered for. With the large four inch screen, multimedia is something that the 2X should be good at, and at least the video playback doesn't disappoint. Every video I threw to every video was played perfectly with the dual cores making sure that the action was silky smooth. Here's the uh, speaker, by the way. It's loud enough, but a tiny bit tiny. <laughs> Memory-wise, there's an 8 gigabyte internal SD card, of which only about 6 gigabyte is actually available to the user, plus an empty micro SD slot for you to expand the device as you see fit. This being a large screen, uber powerful Android slab, web browsing and email is a pleasure with the 2X bringing even complex web pages up almost as fast as a laptop at times. Embedded flash videos play perfectly thanks to the 2X's GPU being used to accelerate things. And it was usually a doddle to maximize these videos to full screen as needed very good quality overall the optimus 2x is a slightly mixed package but it's still one of the better android smartphones i've ever used just don't get too excited by the dual core processor or the 1080p capture and playback they don't really deliver 100 percent of what you might be expecting but if you're an android man or woman at heart living in the browser living in email and social applications then the optimus 2x is genuinely superb and comes recommended.